Welcome back to the NASCAR The Game 2013 Robbie Gordon Season Mode. Today we head on to race number 11 from Darlington Raceway, the Southern 500, back when it was a spring race. Obviously, I've got nine wins in ten races. I changed my goal from just winning the championship to now besting Richard Petty's win record of 27 victories in one season. It's starting to look like we're going to be capable of doing it. Uh, and I do have one poll dating back at Texas. Matt Kenseth become our most legitimate championship contention. Uh, he's got seven top tens in ten races. We almost have 100 points on him, though. Martin Truex Jr. assumes third in the championship standings. Paul Menard sits fourth. He's had a great run going. Greg Biffle, fifth in points. Jimmy Johnson, the real 2013 champion, sits sixth. JPM, after almost flipping out of the racetrack at Talladega, actually picked up spots in the point standings up to seventh. Uh, Rocket Man sets in eighth position. Logano in ninth. Dennis in tenth. Casey Mears, 11th. And Travis Pastrana rounds out your top 12. From there, David Reagan currently sets in one of the wild card spots because you have to be from 11th to 20th uh, to claim one of those. He's back up in the contention for that, setting 19th. Only two winners this season, Robbie Gordon, which is myself, and David Reagan at Bristol of all places. And your last card championship point standings, it's Travis Quapple leading that standing. The actual 2003 Truck Series titleist. But like I mentioned, we're going on at Darlington. I'm probably going to be a lot quieter. <laughs> In this race compared to the other ones just because it takes a lot of focus to try to lap this place in any game but even in this one as you know kind of cartoony and you know arcade like the physics are in this one it still takes a lot of focus to get around Darlington correctly and when I say arcadey I just mean it's not a true sim it's still a thousand percent better than the heat games and uh, 21 ignition let's make sure that car's set up just like you want it for qualifying get out on the track and see what you think and like usual I do have a custom setup already ready for this race. I am going to edit the setup just a little bit because I want to put some more air pressure in the right side tires so I'm not burning them up quite as much. And I'm telling you, we got some big races here. You know, Darlington, Southern 500 in this one, then the All-Star race after that, then the 600. That's a three-race streak that I'd love to take all three. Let's get a good solid run today, bud. No unnecessary risk. Just drive it like you know you can. And this place really punishes unnecessary risks, I can tell you that. The walls are so close to you on corner exit. It's amazing. Love this racetrack. Like I mentioned in the Kansas race, it's just one of those places that's fast, but takes a lot of ability and precision to lap. Love racetracks like here at Darlington and you know Charlotte coming up, places like that. Very enjoyable racetracks. Dennis on pole currently. Got up the racetrack just a little bit in three and four. And here we come to the start finish line. I don't think it's going to be pole, but it's going to be 22nd. I think I've got myself a better race setup than qualifying setup. The tires are probably dead on this lap, so I don't think we're going to get anything more. Yeah, we're just a little too slow in three and four. The car's pushing just a little bit too much. Going to cut across the racetrack. And yeah, we're going to start, start off 22nd. We just got to get a little bit faster for the race. Hit each wall. I'm just a little bit worried about starting up on the outside. Okay. You're going to have to fight your way through the pack on race day. But I know you're ready. Well, I definitely am ready. And uh, this thing's got a race set up. I still got out-qualified by Travis. But anyway, on pole, obviously, Dennis. Matt Kenseth still applying that pressure in the championship. He both qualifies and races good. Uh, Marcos qualifies in third spot. Biff, Harvick, Truex, Edwards, KFB, Dale Jr., all that stuff makes sense uh, for the most part. Once again, qualifying order is the most logical part of the weekend. And Joe Nemechek dead last. Because I'm starting down in 22nd, there's a little bit of concern that I might overheat the engine running in traffic. So I'll be probably ducking down to the inside, down the straightaways to try to cool the front end. Because uh, I've got 65% tape, which runs fine in clean air. But if I stay up, tucked behind cars for a long time, which I probably will be waiting for the you know traffic to dissipate around this place, uh, I'm probably going to run the risk of overheating the car. This place got a very balanced challenge, believe it or not. 
out of this game, a balanced challenge in a race. We've got kind of a hole to dig ourselves out of, so it's going to take some focus in the early portion of the race. And one cool thing about this track is the AIs don't typically wreck all the time here, so we might be able to get a long run and in some legitimately good racing. At least I'd like to see it. Very topical question here. Crowd's fired up. Let's give them a great show. It's Mother's Day weekend, and we're at one of NASCAR's most historic racetracks. Darlington Raceway for the Bojangles Southern 500. Mike Joy with Daryl Waltrip. Well, you call it Darlington. I call it the lady in black. I call it the lady too tough to tame. This place, Mike, is a driver's track. It's one of the crown jewels. It's the one you want to have on your resume. David Pearson's won here a dozen times. Jeff Gordon, seven victories here. Who do you like? I like Jeff Gordon. Uh, you know, he's, he's been on a roll lately. I like Jeff Gordon, but Jimmy Johnson will be right on his tail. It's narrow, it's fast, and the wall is unforgiving. Who this evening can tame the track too tough to tame? Quite excited for this one. It's a tough race track. We got to dig ourselves out of a hole. That's a crown jewel race to win. Let's see if we can do it. The toughest lap is going to be the first, starting up on the outside. Still wrong way. All right, inside line checked up. That's typical of this place. Puff of smoke. Ooh, boy. All right, got, up, got myself down to the inside. Jeff Gordon. We made it. Don't know how we made it, but we made it. Car up top. Okay, that was risky business. But we're out of that mess, and we kind of got the field down to single file, which is good news. Because I'd like to be able to pass these guys one at a time. Still outside. The way I got this car set up, it's a bit of a sacrifice in three and four, but a massive gain in one and two, as I got up in Austin Dillon there and almost wrecked. One up top. On the outside. Ooh, car bottomed out. Austin Dillon went for a crossover. I wasn't going to let him do it. All right, so up in front of me is McMurray. And I'm back where I started. Matt Kenseth's the leader, though. And he is already applying a lot of pressure in this race. All right, there we go. That's that advantage in one and two that I love about this setup. Your door. Up top, your door. Just complete the pass Our outright on McMurray. All clear. And I got to shut the door in three and four so that he doesn't get around me in the corner that I'm much, door much right slower in. Right, here we go. Good run through one and two. Going to try to look down to the inside of Jeff Burton. Set him up. Probably not going to get him because we're coming down to three and four, which I can't really handle very well. See, the car just shoves a little bit too much, but I think I got a good enough run through three and four to set him up now in one and two. We got a car pitting. It's lap six, and we got people pitting already. That time I set Jeff up correctly. Already clear of him. Up to 20th, and slowly but surely, just walled Travis. Slowly but surely, we're going to make our way through this pack. Car closer on the inside. That car got real loose off three right there. Had to stay off Travis. I had to hope that I wasn't going to get hooked by Jeff. Now you're clear. Right, here we go, diving down to the inside. See, this thing just rolls so good through one and two. Looking down on the inside of Gordon. Couldn't hold it, but right I made him get up into the wall. Another car pitting. Don't know if that's some type of big strategy or what they're really going for with that. Massive run on Jeff Gordon. One outside. Absolutely massive. Couldn't hold it. Car approaching low. Oh, man. That was a slide job, actually, I just pulled on Jeff, because I barely got the car slowed down by the time I got to turn three. That was actually really cool. Okay, behind you. Now I've got to set up Tony. Your 
your door up top. Got him. We're on the high side. Come on, you got him. Looking high. Car up top. It's a game of chicken through three and four. Can you force your competitor into the wall by diving in so low they think they got to get on the throttle early to clear you? The mind games of Darlington. But man, I can get through one and two good. Really good right here. Two piece player. right there. Maybe even three piece if Joey will give me a lane. Well, Logano's never been known to give people lanes, has he? Man, he was really flirting with that wall. Such a good run through one and two. I mean, this thing just eats through one and two. Can barely do squat in three and four. Oh, Brad just got into the wall. And I've cleared Stenhouse. Couldn't quite keep position on Brad there. Got to get back in line. And just peek down to the inside. That's all I need. Outside. Man, we're, we're going after it. Outside, we battled good at Kansas for the lead. Me and Brad outside. did, so I guess this is a continuation of that in some form. He's now hitting the wall again. Already got me. You have to set him up again. Put the bumper to him. That wasn't exactly intentional, but uh, it did work. See, the temperature's up to 235, which is a little bit concerning. Because it's starting to run just a little hot. Here we go, looking to the inside of Johnson. I gave him the bumper, but I'm up to 11th. Now I gotta be more worried about right front tire wear, believe it or not, than the engine. All right, I got the engine temp back down into a normal range. I don't know how long that's gonna last because I'm running clean air, so another car pitting. We are rolling really, really good through one and two. Just cannot get the thing to run very well through three and four, but I'm still faster. I actually already cut a second off of Matt Kenseth's lead because he was four seconds ahead. Now he's only three. We got a good long run car, to put it simply. That's a full second you made up on the driver in front. Way to go, buddy. All right, I'm catching right up to Kyle Busch, who's the 10th place car right now. We're approaching the pit window, though, at least for me. I plan on pitting lap 26 and lap 53. And I am now right on Kyle Busch's back bumper. Looking down to the inside in the three and four. Probably not going to work. Because I just I cannot hold the corner. But Kyle at least tagged the wall. Allowed me to stay within close distance to him. There we go. That one and two momentum. That is the real deal right there. Up into the top ten. Woo, Kyle Busch almost got my left rear, and I almost cleared myself. Massive run through turn two. Oh, I put Carl into the wall. Still faster than me in three and four, though. All right, here we go again. Trying to put a move on Carl. Just couldn't get the car to. He's warned me about my tires now. All right, I'm going to have to go to lap 26. I missed the corner. At least so did Carl. All right, I'm still stuck behind Edwards. And uh, I'm going to short pit, you know, by coming down this lap. So I'm probably going to leapfrog some of these guys. See, look, my, even my setup plays into my strategy because that right front ain't going to last any longer. Massive run. And pitting 
This time, here we go. Oh, they knew to come down with me. Let's go. Get plenty of fuel in there. That was Kyle Busch, who I almost wrecked right there. All right, going to need a flawless pit stop. And you know what? I am going to take some grill tape off, just because I don't want to even have to think about melting the engine. But uh, we had a pretty good first stint. I'm glad to see no cautions, because we might even get a race that goes green all the way for the first time this whole season. It'd be cool to see. Just a complete and total mess on pit road. All right, finally, we've gotten to our stall. We're going to need an awesome pit stop, because this is green flag stops. I really like how Darlington this race has been, you know, with long green runs and stuff. It's just uh, one of the only tracks that I think is well balanced in this game. All right, here we go. Kenseth got off in front of us, so did Dennis. Nice pit stop. We're doing great, buddy. Illegally merging. I'm going to cut across the banking. Flag, Crap. Never mind about that whole green flag thing. I should have just stayed out, I guess. So, Scott Speed tries to, I guess, pit and just gets dumped down to turn three. Well, I've already got my service. I can stay out, and I'm in fifth. The people who pitted was pretty much the majority of the field. Uh, Scott Speed pitted but didn't get any service. In fact, most people pitted and didn't get any service. I'm not really sure how that goes. On this restart, Kenseth, Dennis, Truex, Ambrose, and myself is the top five. It was pretty cool while it lasted, that green flag racing, wasn't it? Of course, we had to have something stupid happen in the back. But we're still going to get another green flag pit stop. One up top. At some point in this race, really as I right wrecked Truex coming off the corner, I'm glad nobody got destroyed in that. All right, Dennis has gotten the lead on this restart. Approaching low. Approaching your rear. I just shipped Marcos into that corner. Up to third. Forward progress. Three back. He's clear. Here we go. That's big momentum. Through one and two. And now I don't need to worry about the uh, engine overheating. Oh, oh, oh. Clear right. Well, I've learned the trick about three and four. If you can't outrun him, left rear him. That was my fastest lap. The coolest fastest lap. All right, Dennis, you ready? Because you might get the same treatment. He held on to it. That is props to Dennis right there. He could take my best shot down into three. Trust me, I don't go light on the shots. Here we go. One and two momentum. No contest. That's what I'm talking about. We got the fastest car and the best driver. That's right. Now time to see if we can run away with this during this stint. Never mind. Looking low. My best corner, I just car throw the thing back. into the wall. Got a car behind. And now Dennis is going to have a pretty good shot at getting around me. Because I still terribly suck in three and four. Block. Sergeant. Block. On your bumper. Block. We can do this all day. I don't think I've ever seen many people blocking at Darlington, but it's you, it's doable. Keep messing up my entry into one now. I think it's because I don't have any rabbits to chase. When you're running out by yourself in the lead, you kind of <laughs> lose sight of where your markers are. Two cars on pit road, by the way. Don't know why. I guess they might be trying to short pit, go for a strategy call, and maybe try to make it all the way to the end. I don't think that's doable, but still, I think they might be trying it. But then again, these AIs are not that clever. You know, we saw that at Kansas. There's no way they're going for an aggressive strategy. Way overdrove turn three. Had to back it all the way up in the center as to not mow the fence down. All right, so we're catching up to lap traffic. Not quite sure who that is. 
But uh, it's one of the cars that pitted a while back, so they will have a little bit better tires than us. You can see I'm starting to put a lot of time on Dennis. A little bit over two seconds. Doing great. Nice and steady. Second place is way back. And that means that the big runs I get through one and two more than make up for the craptastic running that I have through three and four. Because I cannot hold pace at the tight end of the speedway. Down here, just the car shoves. It doesn't do anything you want it to. But fortunately, this is a smaller end of the track, meaning that I'm better on the bigger end, which makes for a greater percentage of the racetrack. And I guess that's where the advantage is coming from. AKA, I'm good here more than I suck. If you want that simplified. Another car pitting, by the way. There is Almarola, who we're catching up to. That was one of the cars that pitted earlier. And uh, nearly a three-second advantage on Hamlin now as we're maybe go. approaching the pit window, although I'm probably going to try to run it long because the AIs have a habit of wrecking, as you saw with Scott Speed earlier uh, during the pit cycles. All right, I've caught up to Almarola. Going to try to make a move down on the bottom. Probably not going to be able to do it because this is three and four. Yeah, nothing there. You can see I'm way, way off in three and four. Can't even pass a lap car. But uh, I got to set him up for the exit of two, and then I'll probably get him. Right there, corner beneath him, and just get to the throttle. I can only really pass off turn two. If I pass in a three, I probably, like I did to Kenseth, just wreck him out of the way. And you can see taking 5% grill tape off and running clean air has... Uh, really brought my engine temps down. They were at about 236, I think they were earlier. Now running around 220. You know, the cool thing about this cycle of stops is it seems like only one or two cars comes down every lap. It's not like half the field, so they're not really wrecking or uh, bottlenecking nearly as much yeah, as normal. There. My right front's getting very worn. It looks like I'm going to have to actually pit pretty darn close to my original plan strategy anyway. Because I was going to pit lap 53, and Honestly, I might have to. Hamlin, I think, got stuck behind a bunch of lap traffic because he's dropped like two or three seconds off of me from when I last checked, and he has not pitted. So something happened to Dennis big time. Take care of your tires. We've got our fresh set sitting right here. Yeah, I'm going to need Whatever them tires doing, soon. Just keep doing it. All right, you know what? Screw it. We're coming to lap 53. I am pitting. This time, I'm going to adhere to the original strategy. That right front's gone anyway. Matt Kenseth. Has assumed second, that means Dennis pitted. He's going for an undercut by one lap. Here we go. Final pit stop. Remember pit road speed. Okay, there we go, I downshifted to reverse again, but I did it. We're gonna need our crew to absolutely nail this stop. And hopefully this can be a race winner. Got a few cars staying out. Truex just assumed the race lead. Praying for no cautions this time. You're one lap down. Okay, man. Keep this position. We're the lucky dog. We are the lucky dog as well. We're in fourth. Whoa! I didn't even realize that David Gillen was that close to me. Yellow, yellow. There's a caution. I'm the lucky dog, though. Screw it. I guess I should have just ran long again. Who screwed up this time? It was Big Daddy himself. Stops on the racetrack and gets rammed by David Reagan. Great job, pal. All right, we do not need to pit. Because we just pitted. I am restarting somewhere bad. 25th. Well, then again, I'm scored in fourth. So I'm 25th in line, but fourth on the track. So that means I'm going to have to drive like an idiot here because, uh... Car outside. Your door. Yeah. Yeah, our competition's right up in front of us, is what I was going to say, before I almost murdered everyone. Because Truex is only about two seconds ahead, but the leader is Casey Kane way up front. Got underneath Johnson. Underneath Dennis. Got to get my way up to Truex and folks. Veteran move right there, man. Great that was a veteran move. According to my crew chief, that right there was the veteran move. 
Hate to see the rookie move. We're on the low side. Yes. Look at that momentum. At your door up top. Car inside, just looking. I made it. Car inside, trying to get to your corner. I made it. The leader is six seconds ahead. Do your best, man. Oh, jeez. I finally wrecked. Wow. That was a very slow motion crash. I'm not pitting. This time I'm gonna restart actually up and forth. That I think is, is good news. And go figure, by the way, Jeff Gordon causes that caution and cycles out as the leader. I'm not a fan of that. Don't know who wrecked, but I got myself up to second. I will not be denied this win by Jeff Gordon's stupid caution that he caused probably on purpose, and I'm going to call it Spingate. This time he is not getting the 13th chase spot, and Eric Amarola just simply ran out of talent. And took like 20 cars with him. Brad spun out. He actually wrecked like two cars just spinning backwards. Jeff pitted. Jeff pitted. I did not. Danica, David Stremmy's up here. I love this. All right, nobody wreck. We've got the perfect opportunity to gap this field by a lot because Danica and David Stremmy are going to bottle the crap out of the drivers who just put on tires. And I'm sorry about skipping that one replay of me wrecking, but I was a little bit too frustrated at myself, but I realize now it was an advantage. Jeff's coming quick. Time to go. Come on, Danica. Somebody's going really slow on the front straightaway. Don't know what that's about. Oh, I see Jeff hauling up on the outside. That's dangerous. But my masterful turn one and two with a little bit of wall contact gives us a one second advantage. You're doing great. Nice and steady. Second place is way back. Just nailed one and two. Absolutely nailed it. And by the way, I need to point out that restart where I started 25th in line, that's total crap because that's not how the restart rules worked in this era. So I will not accept Jeff Gordon's number one spin gate and number two NASCAR's officials screwing up the running order by that much. This will not be a victory gift wrap for Hendrick. There's been too many of them. And please, Danica, keep doing your job in second. Make this a career best finish. I went a little bit too wreck into that line. Pushing the crap out of this race car. And please, good God, no cautions. Jeff Gordon's been stalled out by the power of Danica and Jamie McMurray on old rubber. Watch out, blow car, blow tire. Somebody blew a tire, don't know who that was, don't really care. They got off the racetrack. All right, here we come. Got to make it to the white. Everybody keep it together. There it is. Oh, yeah. Danica doing an awesome job four seconds back. Making that car three lanes wide. Through three and four, I do not give a crap about NASCAR shenanigans in this one. We are winning the Southern 500. Win number 10 on the season. I would not be denied on that last couple restarts. That's another one, but it's probably my favorite. NASCAR did not want us to have this one, and neither did Jeff Gordon. 
but we took it from him. <laughs> You're the man. Doing it right on the logo. All the logos, they're, they're all getting the treatment. There we go. Bottomed out big. Soak it up, man. Great job today. <laughs> Way to go. Whoa! I have fallen through the world. I have to <laughs> advance before the game crashes. Because I've done that before and it does crash the game. I fell into a time warp, but I still won the race and lit the car on fire. What can I say? You're a winner. Keep it up, champ. Have yourself a look at this top ten. Robbie Gordon wins. One of my favorite victories of the season, I can tell you that. Danica gets second. Career best finish. Great job holding up the field for me. McMurray in third. Jeff Gordon cheated his way up to fourth. Casey Kane in fifth position. David Stremme sixth. Travis Pastrana seventh. Marcus Ambrose in eighth position. Martin Trex Jr. ninth. And Matt Kenseth, championship contender, rounds out your top ten. Juan Pablo Montoya finished dead last. We didn't have any DNFs. But man, I have to tell you, that was a uh, very, very interesting race. It's kind of hard to manage setting up all the passes and stuff at this place because, you know, the way I've got the car set up, it is so fast in one and two, but it just has nothing in three and four. So it's a gigantic compromise. You know, normally they say you want to be, you know, decent in every corner instead of really good in one and suck in the other. But I've always, every car I've set up for Darlington, no matter the game, Great one and two, suck in three and four. It's all about percentage. You gotta be better at the bigger part of the track. Oh, and by the way, since I skipped this replay out of anger, here's the replay of me wrecking trying to get through lap traffic as the game stutters on the replays, which is the most common glitch in this thing. But anyway, I was just trying to plow through the lap traffic that I was placed into for no reason as quick as possible, and I wrecked in slow motion for about 15 miles. Trying to get back up into the pack. Didn't really realize that everyone was gonna be there, but I should have figured. Uh, and then I finally got finished off by Scott Speed, but that's about it. Just a gigantic wreck that I caused out of frustration. You know, Jeff Gordon, his whole spin gate thing, uh, <laughs> it actually placed him with some type of glitch restart where he had a massive advantage because all the lap cars restarted between me and the leader. It, the game just massively glitched, but point being, I got Jeff back. Listen to the game audio right now. Sounds like a group of mice fighting. But yeah, so help me God, I was not going to allow Jeff Gordon to win that race after what he did. But uh, that's our 10th win in 11 races. Still run away with it. Over a 100-point advantage above Matt Kenseth now, who still has eight top 10s in 11 races. Great consistency. Martin Truex Jr. in third position. Greg Biffle moves up to fourth. Jimmy Johnson up to fifth position. Menard down to sixth. Dennis up to seventh. Pastrana moves all the way up to eighth position in points. Uh, Jeff Gordon all the way up to fifth. That's not good. Casey Mears up into 10th, Marcus Ambrose all the way up into 11th, and Ryan Newman rounds out your top 12. Danica Patrick has moved into 16th position. Kyle Busch all the way down to 20th right now, and as we look back, Tony Stewart still stuck down in 32nd, and Travis Quapple is still dead last by a lot in the point standings. So anyway, that does it for race number 11 from Darlington Raceway in the NASCAR The Game 2013 Robbie Gordon season mode. I hope that you have enjoyed it. A lot more content like this coming soon, and i um, hoping that you've been enjoying the uh, more consistent upload schedule as of late. It's been fun getting these videos out. And this race was very hard fought, to say the least. I wanted to win the Southern 500, you know, since we're on an absolute tear of getting race victories, so wanted to make sure we at least check off all those crown jewels. And uh, like I said, the next two races, All-Star Race and Coke 600, very important ones to win. So anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a Patreon set up as well, and uh, a lot more content coming soon, including more NASCAR The Game stuff and uh, whatever else I think of.